All right, let's do this. All right, welcome back, folks, um, to our last lecture on aging and virtual memory. So hopefully after today, we're going to um, wrap things up, stop talking about memory and virtual things and virtual memory and aging, and we're going to move on to talking about more interesting stuff um, in, in operating system security and doing some more interesting things. Um, a few announcements before we um, we begin. So here's how the next week, um, uh, week 10 is going to look like. So we have one more assignment. Um, so that's going to be, let me just bring this down. Yeah, so we have one more assignment. That's going to be an advanced assignment. It's going to be a security assignment. And the due date is the last day of process. So I think it's Friday or Sunday if you like. So basically you can submit up to Sunday evening. Though I, I wouldn't recommend that because you want to study for your final, right? Um, remember that you don't have, we don't have a final in this class, so there's no need to show up on any day. There's nothing that you have to submit um, other than your projects. Project Milestone 3, I believe I checked with everyone, and um, we have decided that the due date is going to be the last day of final. So assuming I, my, my calculations are correct, that's going to be May 27th uh, at 5 p.m. So that's the, the where the quarter officially ends. And after that date, I will not be able to accept project submissions. OK. Um, one more thing is if you are trying to use the Moodle gradebook to um, do some of your, calculate your grades and look at how, look at how you're doing, the problem with Moodle's gradebook is that sometimes it messes things up a little bit and it's a pain to deal with. So I will hopefully over the weekend take care of that. So on Monday you can kind of see where you're at and, and have a better view of how things are. Okay, questions? Okay, so um, yeah, so we're gonna conclude talking about um, virtual memory today. Um, and we're going to end our discussion of paging by doing a quick recap. So what have we done so far? And see the, the way that the lies that the OS makes. We, we saw that the, the OS is using, is playing the role of an illusionist, right? It's, it's giving, it's, it's telling lies to each process and, and ad, telling it that, you know, you own this address space while you actually don't. Um, so um, the lies that the OS tells are going to come back and bite it in the butt, right? Because you have limited memory and each process thinks that it owns the entire thing. So how are you gonna manage that? When both of them are requesting their max, what are you gonna do, right? So that's how, that's where um, page replacement comes, comes into play. When we have to take things out of memory and bring things back into and we're going to see that there is a theoretical optimal on the best thing we can do on page replacement. So we're going to talk about that in depth and then see the different policies and how they compare to the theoretical. OK. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to use whiteboard for some reason. OneNote has been crashing, so. Um, I'll, I'll make sure you get the copy of this whiteboard in the class notebook to reference, to reference it later. Okay, so let's go ahead and get, go back to one of our um, analogies. So let's say you open up a convenience, convenience store and you only have five slots on your shelves. So I don't know why, for some reason, um, you bought a really small place and you only have five slots on your shelves. So here's the order of how you buy things and you fill up those slots so you can um, put things on, on, on display for people to buy. So you, you buy milk first and you put that on display. Then you buy sugar, then eggs, then razors, and for some reason, you top it off with hot pockets. Okay, so that's what your grocery store or convenience store is going to sell: milk, sugar, eggs, razor, eggs, razors, and hot pockets. 
So now, you know, there's a crazy thing that, you know, just like these days where everyone is buying gas and the first uh, the first few days of or the first few weeks of um, COVID when everyone was was buying um, toilet paper, um, people discover that rice is the new big thing. And everyone is buying rice. So you want to bring in rice because you want to profit off of the craze of people buying rice all the time. So you want to replace one of those five with rice. So which one are you going to go for? Which one are you going to replace? Yeah. Yes. So I'm going to replace whatever is selling the least. Which I hope is going to be the hot pockets in, in this combination of things, but I don't know. It depends on how people um, behave. So you decide that you look at your books and you see that you're selling, I don't know, let's say razors the least, and you decide to pick, pick out razors, put them back, um, not, not display them anymore, and bring in rice and put it on. So another approach is you do a first in, first out combination. So what you decide on doing is that, well, the one that I have the oldest in the store, so the one that I first bought, and it's the oldest thing in the store, I'm st gonna stop selling this product and I'm gonna replace it with rice. So which one of these is that going to be? EX, is that the first thing we bought? Milk, right? So we're going to replace the milk in, in our um, store. So what's the problem with replacing milk with rice? So assume you just throw it away. You're wasteful. What's the other problem? Uh, specifically with, with just a, adapting a five-fold strategy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't account. For importance of the item. And the tablet is dead again. All right, so we had this happen a few times in the first section, and I'm guessing it's going to keep happening. All right, so unfortunately, going to have to hard reset the tablet. That's the operating system failing on us in the operating systems class. Okay. Ah, there we go. Something happened and we're back in business. For the importance of the item. Okay. So, the third thing you can possibly do is if you get magical powers and you can look into the future, you can, what, what can you say? If you have the power to look into the future, which one are you going to select? Yes, so instead of looking into the history, one thing you can do is that you can look into the future and remove the one that sells the least. So between policy one and policy three, which one do you think is going to be better? Three, right? Because the history, as, as much as we would like that our history kind of predicts our future, 
it's not always the case. Like some something might happen, and for some reason people just want to go buy hot pockets in big quantities. So if you decide to remove those and bring in rice instead, that's not a you know it's not a good 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 move, right? If you could look into the future, that would be a much much better move to do. So that's it. This is exactly what we're going to be talking about um, in class today. We're going to take a look at these um, three policies. This is FIFO, so it's pretty obvious. This is the optimal, or, or sorry, this is called the least recently used policy. And this is called the, op, or this is the, in fact, the optimal policy. But we haven't really said what problem are we trying to solve yet. So the problem is the following. The OS overpromises memory to processes. So because it's giving them this illusion that every one of you can have as many memory as you want, and but effectively, let's say we're on a 32-bit system, I can only have four gigabytes of memory. So if I promise each and every process that, you know, hey, you can have four gigabytes, you can have four gigabytes, and you can have four gigabytes, and then all of them request four gigabytes, then we're screwed, right? The OS has lied to every one of them, and what does it do now? So the problem becomes, what do we do when we are under memory pressure. And the solution is, so here's what, here's a question. When you lie about something and you get in trouble for that lie, what do you do to solve the problem? You tell another lie, right? Exactly. So what we're going to do is gonna, you're going to lie some more. So instead of telling the processes that, you know, hey, I'm sorry, I over promised you memory and I don't have enough to service your request. We're going to just give them another lie. What we're going to do is we're going to. Use disk as an extension of our memory. Right, so here's how things are going to happen. This is our main memory. And it's pretty full right now. We have a lot of frames, but. They're pretty much full. And we have a process here that comes in and asks for a virtual address. So what's the first thing we do in paging when we get a virtual virtual address? What do we do with that virtual address? Yeah. Can you say that again? Yes, exactly. So we're going to have to get the physical address from this. Um, virtual address. So the first thing we do, we go to our page table or our TLB, depending on which one we're implementing or which, um, if we're implementing a TLB. But what we're going to see is that the physical address is not in memory. So I'm going to just write zero here for not in memory. So zero means not in memory. So we have the mapping, but it's not a one of these. It's not one of these frames. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to go and get this frame from disk. Because that's our backup of the stuff that we overflow with. So here's how things are going to happen. We're going to take a look at all of these. And see, pick out one of them to free up. So let's say we pick this guy to free. Free up this guy. So we're going to go in here. And we're going to take out this guy. And write it to. Our disk.
Then after that, we're gonna bring out copy okay that seems to solve the problem so copy the page from disk into here and then tell the user the content of the memory location Yeah. So that's the page on the page first. Uh, physical address. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's write it here. PA is physical address. All right. So the question is, which one of these should we pick to replace? which is exactly the same problem we were dealing with. We have milk, sugar, eggs, and all of those things. We want to replace one of them. Which one of those do we gonna, are we going to replace is the question that we're going to ask ourselves in this session. So the way we're going to talk about these things is by doing the activity while we speak. So if you go to the course web page, um, you can go ahead and um, download the activity. It's a, just an Excel sheet. So if you can download the Excel sheet, um, from the session information for today, and it's going to look something like this. And make sure you're initially on the FIFO sheet. Uh, on the course web page, on schedule, um, see if I, I don't have Firefox open, but it's on the schedule page on the session information for today. Yep. And make sure you're on the FIFO sheet so we can all be on the same page when we start. OK, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing is that this process, this idea of uh, see, use black in here. When something is not in memory, we incur what we call a page fault. So a page fault happens when we try to access something that is mapped to physical memory but is not present in physical memory. Okay, so page fault happens when a page <coughs> is mapped to physical memory but is not present in physical memory. So let's start with our first and simplest algorithm which is first in first out. So basically, I'm going to look at all of my previous pages. When it's time to select a page to pick, I'm going to look at my previous pages and I'm going to take and I'm going to look at the oldest one in and then I'm going to replace that. one. So let's take a look at that through the example of the first one. So in this activity, we have a bunch of memory accesses. So in this following order, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 3 and so on. We're going to be calculating the number of hits and the number of misses and the hit rate inside of main memory. So by hit, we mean we don't have a page fall. By miss, we mean we have a page fall. In other words, when we hit in physical memory, this means that the frame is present. We don't have to get it from disk. When we miss in physical memory, we means that it means that we have to go and get the information from disk. Okay? So we only have three frames available to us. That's all we can use. And we assume initially that everything is on disk. So nothing is in main memory. 
So all of our information is on this. All right. So what's going to happen first is here's the format. We're going to the user is going to want to access page zero, but page zero is on disk. We can't actually um, use it yet. So we're going to incur a page fault and bring page zero and put it in frame one. Second access is going to be to um, page one, but we already we don't have page one in memory, so we're going to go and get page one and put it in frame two. And then third thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in page two into frame three. So we have to live with these page faults. This is what we call the cold start or cold page faults because we have to bring things from disk initially to start things up. Now the fourth, uh, fourth access, is that going to be a page fault or not? It is is a request to, to, to page zero going to be a page fault or not? No, right? So because it's going to be in, it's already in frame one, so I don't really need to bring anything from this. So we don't have a page. And as you can see, as we're doing things, um, we're updating our hit rate as we speak. Now we need page one. So page one is already in frame two. So we don't have a memory access issue or a page. One. Now comes the time where we have three frames in memory which are 0, 1, and 2, or three pages in memory, which are 0, 1, and 2, and we're asking for page 3, which is not in memory. So now we, we do have a page fault, and which one of one, 0, 1, and 2 are we going to remove from disk or from memory? 0, because it's the oldest. So we're going to take 0 out, put 3 in, and we incur a page fault. Now we're so unlucky that the next page we need was exactly zero, the one we evicted, right? So we're gonna have to, um, which page are we gonna evict now? One, whoops. So we're gonna bring zero, zero in, replace it in one. Luckily, the next one is gonna be zero, uh, access to three, sorry. So no page fault. Next up, we need frame one again, but we just removed frame one. So it's it's bad, right? Um, so we're going to have to bring it in place of frame two. And we have a page fault. And to make things worse, we just removed page two. And the next one we're going to ask for is, of course, page two. So we're going to have to remove three and bring in page two, and we have a picture. So now one is on disk, so that's, uh, excuse me, one is in the, in, the, in the frames of memory, so we don't have to do anything else. So this is not a page fault, and this is the hit rate that we get. So this is saying that 30% of the time, things are going to be in memory. 70% of the time, I'm going to have to go to disk. And the penalty of having to go to disk is a hefty penalty, right? Because I have to go to access a mechanical device that, that's very slow, that's in the order of milliseconds. And milliseconds in terms of computation time, that's a lot of time, it's a long time, right? So if I have to go to disk 70% of the time, this is terrible. Right, so, but how how much better can we do than 30%? That's the second question we have to ask, right? Okay, if I tell you that, you know, I did 30% um, hit rate, but the absolute best is 40%, then I'm doing quite okay, right? So we have to know what's absolutely the best thing we could do. Out of all possible page replacement algorithms, which one gives us the absolute best performance? So the second thing we're going to look at 
is the Optima page replacement policy. So this is proven to be the absolute best policy. So you, it's been proven that you can't do any better than the optimum page replacement policy. So cannot do any better than optimum. And it turns out that the optimal page replacement policy is the one that looks into the future and pick the page that's going to be accessed the furthest into the future. So I peek into the magic ball and I look at my future accesses and I see the one that's going to, the page that's going to be accessed the most late in our um, accesses and I just replace them. So I, in a sense, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to push and delay my page faults as far as possible into the future. Right? This is not a problem for now operating system. This is a problem for you know 50 memory accesses from now operating system. Right? So that's a, this is the, the idea of the page replacement policy. And it turns out that that is the best you could do. The best you could do is that when you have a problem, you say, this is not a today problem. I'll solve this in a few days, right? That's that's what we can possibly do in, in, in OS land. So let's take a look at that. So you can switch to the optimal um, uh, sheet now. And I'm just going to copy the first three because they're still going to be the same cold start as in the previous case. So always we're going to have to pay this penalty of the first three frames. They're always on disk, so I have to pay the penalty of bringing them into it. So now what happens when I ask for um, page zero? Well, page zero is already in memory, so we don't have a page fault. Page one is already in memory. We don't have a page. So now when I try to access page three, it's not in memory. In memory, we have zero, one, and two, so we have a page fault. And which page do you think we're going to evict now? So we're going to take a look into the future. This is our future. And we're going to look, okay, which one is the page that we're going to access the latest into the future? All right? And you can see that we're going to access two, the latest into the future. So we're going to replace, kick out page two, bring in page three. So then, we ask for three, and then that's kind of like guaranteeing that until that page and until that page gets requested, I'm not going to have any page faults. So just delaying the page fault as far as much as possible. So again, and again, we have a hit. So now we have a page fault. Since there's only one more thing into the future, so we know that it's definitely definitely not going to be page one that we're going to evict. So we're going to evict, let's say, page zero from frame one and bring in two. And we end up with two, one, three, and no page. Okay, so let's take a look at the hit rate in this case. And for this particular example, we can see that the absolute best thing we can do in our replacement policy is going to be close to 55%. Right? That's not good, but we're just going to have to live with it. 
right? If you want to lie and you want to lie some more, then you have to leave, live with the consequences of that. Consequences of that being that half of the time you're going to have to go to this, right? Too bad. Um, so, but this tells us something. If we go back to our FIFO algorithm, 36% compared to 55 is not that good, right? So there's room for 20 points increase in our hit rate. So let's see if we can get better at doing things. And that's what we're going to do next in our least recently used algorithm. So you can think of least, least recently used as the opposite, uh, the optimal, but that looks into the history. So look into the history and pick the one that has been used least uh, least recently. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply this to our example. So again, I'm just going to copy the first three because they're always going to be the same. And we start from the fourth axis. So when we start from the fourth, act, act fourth axis, um, we're accessing zero. So again, no page fault. Accessing one, no page fault. So now we access three and we do have a page fault. So which page are we going to replace now? Two, All right? So because we're going to look into our history. So this is the history, the one in gray. We're going to see which one has been the least recently used. So the one that's been used the furthest into the future, the past, that is two. So we're going to kick two out and bring three in. Uh, we kick two out and brought three. Then we need to access zero. So you can see now that LRU actually picked the exact same page to evict as the optimal policy. So sometimes that turns out to be a really good thing. Sometimes we might not be able to do that. Um, so, but it's something that we're going to see is going to turn out to be better than five. So again, we need page three. So we need page one. It's already present. So now that we need page two, which page do you think we're going to evict now? Say that again. Yeah. Zero. Because we're going to look back into our history, zero is the one that's been least recently used. So we're going to evict zero, bring in two. And then one is already present. So in this case, we end up with 54% um, hit rate, which is exactly the best thing we can do. So what this tells us is when we get to a point where we can get too close to the optimum. This means that you know it's it, it's time to stop tweaking our, our algorithm. So LRU is good enough, right? So that's what um, the thing is going to say. So in terms of implementing LRU, can you see any problems in that? Can you foresee any problems with implementing LRU? Yeah. Yes, exactly. We have to keep track of every access and order the accesses. And we had we introduced a very nasty word in here. Right, like the, the, the ordering things 
it's like a sorting problem and we know we can do better than log n so and i'm not gonna pay log n time every single time i access memory if i have thousands and maybe millions of pages in my in my memory of i'm keeping track of millions of pages i don't want to pay a log n penalty on that right so what what am i supposed to do so this is kind of like good but practically infeasible. Because I need to order some, some form of ordering on the processes. So um, I have to do some, some complex data structures. Either I have to use a min heap, for example, or I would have to um, timestamp each and every process and then go and find the minimum or something along those lines which cause my algorithm to be practically infeasible because I have to do this at every single memory access I have. So can we do better or can we do something that kind of is in between FIFO and LRU and it turns out that we can. And the fourth algorithm we're going to introduce today is called the clock algorithm. So the clock algorithm is an approximation of LRU. So here's how the clock works. We're going to ask the hardware to set a reference, so R stands for reference bit for each accessed page frame. So now I'm going to add an R bit for each page. Anytime I access that bit, I set every time I access that page, I set the bit to one. So to set bit to one on each axis. Then to find the page to replace, I'm going to organize my pages into a circular array. So I'm going to put them in a circular array which is pretty easy to implement, just needs a, an array and, a, and an integer, right? So, and I'm going to have a pointer or an integer that points somewhere, the clock R. The R bit, so each one of those has an R bit. In it. R, R, and so on. The R bit acts like if you play some RPG games or some card games or board games, acts like the armor, right? Anytime you get an armor, when you get hit with, uh, with an attack, that armor goes away, but your health remains the same, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing. If the arm of, if it's time to replace a, a page and the arm of the algorithm is on you, you get attacked or one hit point. If you have an, an armor, then you just lose your arm. If you do not have an armor, then you get evicted from it. So we're kind of playing a game in here where I, this is my arm. Let's say this is one. This is one, and this is one, and this is zero. So what's gonna happen is the following. The arm is gonna start here. So the arm is going to start here at this guy. It's going to attack it for one hit point. It's going to see that it has armor of one. It set its armor to zero, moves on to the next guy. Again, attack for a hit point of one, sets it to zero, and then moves on to the third one, sets it to zero, moved on, moves on to the fourth one, and we found our victim. So this entry has already zero in it so i'm going to evict this page and 
replace it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this algorithm in the time we have remaining for us. So let's assume initially our orbits. Um, so one more thing that we forgot to mention. Every time a page is um, brought from disk, it has full arc. So its orbit is set to one. So let's go ahead and um, do this. So again, now the, 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 just note that the axis order here is a little bit different than the first two, um, so be mindful of that. So the first time we, go, we come in, we're going to incur a page fault, and our clock is pointing. So initially, everything is zero because we don't have any pages. So our clock is pointing to frame one. We're going to move our clock. We're going to bring in page zero, put it in frame one. And since it's, since it's a new page, we're going to set its armor to one. Next up, if we want to bring frame, uh, we're going to bring page one. So page zero is already in there. We're going to move our clock. We're going to give page one and frame two access or, or an armor, and then we incur the page. Same thing happened here now. Zero, one. We bring in page two, put it in frame three. Our clock is going to move one end. So we have a page. So now we have an access that's not in our memory. So what do we do? How can we access um, or, or how does the algorithm work? I'm going to do the first one for you and then we'll, we'll, we'll ask you questions to do the rest. Of it. So what the algorithm is going to do is going to look at frame one. This is where the clock is. This is our frame. Does it have an armor? Yes. So I'm going to attack it for one hit point. No longer has an armor. And I move on to the next. Again, the same thing. Attack this guy, it loses its armor, and I move on to the next. Same thing happens here. And then I move back up. Because it's a circular array, once I can go around once, I just loop around again. Now frame one has no armor, so when I attack it for one hit point, it gets evicted. So frame zero is going to get evicted. We're going to bring in frame three, in, page three, and put it in there. We still have one and two here. Since this is a new page, we give it an armor. We move our clock. So here we incur the page fault as well. So let's keep going. Um, three, two. So we don't have a page fault, but Recall that we said uh, in here. We set the bit to one on each memory access. So each memory access gives you an arc. So when we access page frame or page one on frame two, we're going to give it an arc. Now we need page three, page zero, but it's not in memory. So which one, which frame do you think we're going to evict? Three, right? Because we're going to come in here. We're going to take a look at this guy. It has an armor. So we're going to take the armor off, move our clock hand. This guy does not have an armor, so we're going to evict it. So we have a page fault. Bring in zero in here. Uh, one and three. This now has an armor. We move. So now we access page um, one again. So three, one, zero. So we get a new arm. Three, one, zero. So no page fault, no page fault. And we already have an armor there, so we can't stack armors in a sense. So again, 
three, one, zero, no page fault. Now we have another page fault. So which frame is this algorithm is going to evict? One. What's going to happen to the R bits on all of them? Gonna, gonna set to zero. So we're gonna do not, whoops. Um, that's not good. There we go. Is that that? No. Nope. Uh, using what? Top left, right underneath the clipboard. Thing where it says clipboard, right above that. Yeah. Down, down. There's a no that. Right below that. Ah, this guy. Oh, yeah. Just do a one. Hopefully that'll work. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So now we're on. Um, yeah, so we move our block by one point, one, um, one entry. We set the, the armor to zero, move it again. Set the armor to zero, move it again, and we find our victim that. So that's where we're gonna evict frame one. Page fault, we move this guy further than when we act and we give this guy an R. Finally, when we access frame one again, we're just going to refresh the armor on frame one. Okay, so we're going to end up with a hit rate of about 45.5%. Uh, so that's a lot better than 36. It's still not close to the 55 that we can get in optimally, but it's kind of like in between um, between the two. So in most modern operating systems, the page replacement algorithm you're going to see is a variant or a more optimized version of the clock algorithm. So they're going to try to approximate LRU as much as possible and get as close to the optimal um, as they can. So that's pretty much the end of our discussion of paging um, and virtual memory. Um, most modern operating systems actually use paging these days. So um, this is pretty relevant to what you're gonna see um, in modern operating systems. Tomorrow, um, it, one of two things is, is gonna happen depending on how many questions I get during office hours today. We're either gonna do a project work, work time or we're going to start our security month. So um, because we do have time for next week, we have um, four more lectures um, and, and a guest lecture. Um, so we have a little bit of, of uh, wiggle room. If I see that we get too many questions about the project tonight, then I'm just going to um, turn tomorrow's session if we work on We come in and I let you work on your projects because I really want you to finish up checkpoint one by the end of tomorrow or the end of the weekend at the moment you can get, right? And then we get, um, so you can start working towards the actual full thing because it's going to add more complexity to what you're going to do. Okay, that is all for today and I will see you guys tomorrow.